Hi everyone, now thanks so much for joining me. Let's take a look then at the different payment methods that you need to be aware of and their respective advantages, disadvantages. This is going to be the first of uh, three little lessons on this topic area. It's quite an important one. You're likely to face a question on this in your exam. So let's take a look. Okay, uh, so you can see in this table I've broken this down according to the payment method, a definition of uh, which payment method we're looking at, uh, the respective advantages and the disadvantages. So let's start off quickly with uh, what we have with cash. Uh, of course, we're talking here about notes and coins, physical cash. Uh, widely, of course, the advantages are that it's widely accepted legal tender. Uh, it's, of course, our common form of exchange, uh, but there are, of course, some limitations to it because it is physical. Uh, and that is principally that it is unsuitable for online transactions. And further to that, physical assets can easily be lost or potentially stolen as well. So those are the downsides there, okay? Right, moving on, let's have a look at debit cards. Now, debit cards, more than likely, you've actually got a debit card. Uh, okay, these are issued by banks with payments being deducted directly from your bank account. So the payment is taken directly from your bank account. Um, now, this means, of course, that there is no need to carry cash uh, and it's really widely accepted. You see the uh, the Visa debit sign all over the place, all over the internet. So it's so uh, nice and easy to use. It's also secure as well. Uh, what with uh, the PIN and the, the chip and PIN element that you've got, but also the contactless payment, which we'll look in the subsequent lesson. Uh, okay, but there's downsides, of course. Um, now, the first one is that there's a short time lapse, okay? So there's a short time lapse between the payment actually being made uh, and it going through, okay? Now, that can usually be about a day or so. But because of that, you need to be aware that actually the money could come out of your account straight away. So if the money was to come out of your account straight away, you need to make sure that you've got sufficient funds in there and that you're not putting yourself in danger of going overdrawn without an authorized overdraft. Uh, and it's of course not accepted for small transactions. Normally you need to spend in excess of uh, five pounds um, in independent stores to actually use it. Within supermarkets, of course, it's uh, not a problem and you may well find yourself uh, spending a couple of quid on that. Okay, right, then we've got credit cards. Now, debit cards means that the money is taken straight out of your account. When it comes to credit cards, however, you are taking out a period of credit. A period of credit. Now, this is issued by banks allowing customers to pay cards, uh, to pay by card and delay the payment there that's actually taken place. So it usually takes a month or so for uh, the actual funds to leave your bank account and that will happen once per month uh, at the end of that calendar months uh, and the total spending that's been incurred on your credit card. Okay, so that allows you a period of credit. It means that if you're waiting for your payday, for instance, and you know that payday is two weeks away, uh, and you will have sufficient funds in a month's time to actually be able to pay off uh, that credit that you are taking out, then yeah, it's, uh, it's entirely acceptable to use this. Uh, again, it's widely accepted. Uh, Visa and MasterCards are uh, the most the most common uh, format you see there, but you've also got American Express. Incidentally, the loyalty scheme that American Express has run uh, in recent years it has tended to be one of the best, and they've offered uh, good cashback incentives uh, to cardholders um, that actually take out a lot of spending on their credit card. Okay, there are downsides though, and the big, big downsides are that interest payable, uh, yeah, the interest is payable on balances that are not paid off. So if you do not pay off the entirety of your balance, then you will have to pay quite a considerable bit of interest. It's usually the order of 16 to 20% or so, uh, APR, so that's an annual percentage rate. Uh, okay, so 
that can be very, very expensive if you accumulate really large debts on there. So you need to be very careful in terms of how you actually use a credit card. Uh, and of course, it may encourage uh, debt. And that debt, of course, uh, is not secured. It's unsecured debt, so it's expensive debt. And what I mean by that is that mortgage is secured debt, uh, secured debt tends to be a lot cheaper. So with a mortgage, you may find mortgages as low as just 2%, for instance. Here you're looking at, as we said, 16 to 20%, okay? Um, and if you've got a £4,000 credit card limit and you've got a couple of credit cards, then it can be dangerous. Right, then we've got a check, okay? So, uh, yeah, checks not so commonly used these days, of course, but they're good if you do need to uh, transfer funds via uh, postal methods. And it's, it's nice because it is secure as well a secure form of payment so it's a written order to a bank to make a payment to another person okay uh, now it's a low risk form of payment of course uh, it's widely accepted and it specifies the exact amount pounds and pence okay but there is a time delay in processing a check it can usually be about two days before the funds actually enter your bank account uh, okay and it's of course viewed as outdated uh, in, in today's modern environment uh, okay but nevertheless there are times when making a check payment is appropriate okay um, However, if you have a bounce check, that can be very expensive. A bounce check is where you don't have sufficient funds for that money to actually, uh, that payment to actually take place. Okay, and that will cost you around about a fee of 50 to 100 pounds, depending upon the financial institution uh, you're with. Okay, final one for uh, this session is uh, electronic transfer. So electronic transfer is very, very convenient. Direct transfer of uh, the payment from one uh, to one person to another. Okay, and it's almost instantaneous and it's a recorded format here. So it means that we have a uh, electronic record of where that payment has gone, what time it was made and so on. But it does require careful setup and there is room for error here. Uh, so if you were to put some digits on there that shouldn't be on there, perhaps it won't go through uh, or even worse, it might go into someone else's bank account, of course. Uh, and then finally, it's not suitable um, when you're actually face to face with someone. Uh, okay, so that isn't so useful. Now, you don't have to worry about Apple Pay or Google Pay. Uh, they are not on your specification here. Uh, so you don't need to worry about these. This, the first one of three that we're going to consider here, we'll move on to another five next time. Thanks, guys.